Hello and welcome to our very first Natural History Museum Homework Club Quiz. My name is Rosie and I am from the learning team. Now you might be new to our homework quiz, oh, our homework club, so let me tell you a little bit more about how it works. Each week we have a different nature theme and each day at 9.30 we share a challenge for you to do at home or at school. Now these challenges will link to topics such as maths, art, science and even English. We share these challenges on our Twitter channel, which is at NHM underscore learn. But if your parents or your teachers are not on Twitter, you can also find them on our web page too. Very excitingly, each Friday, we will have a live quiz just like this one today. And you can take part in the quizzes in a mini team if you've got some other people where you are now, or if you're feeling up to a challenge, you can take part on your own as well. Now we absolutely love it when you share your work with us. So if you do take part in any of the challenges throughout the week and you would like to share your work, you can ask your adults or your teachers to use the hashtag NHM Homework Club on Twitter and we will be able to see what you've been up to. And I think we can share with you some of the drawings that were done this week as part of our homework club. These were sent in from TJ and Emily who took part in our dino drawing activity. And I'm sure you'll agree with me, they are amazing. So TJ and Emily, if you are watching, you should be very proud of yourself. We love these. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. Now you've probably guessed that our first topic for this quiz is dinosaurs. It's one of our favorite topics at the museum. So I think we should get the energy going this Friday morning. What I'd like you all to do for me at home or at school, wherever you're watching this, is your best dinosaur roar, okay? So I'm gonna count you in from three. I want teachers, adults, children, everyone to give a go at their best dinosaur roar. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I mean, I can't hear them, but I'm sure they're amazing. I can imagine them echoing down throughout the streets where you are. So excitingly as well today, we're going to be joined by some of our learning team members from both the Natural History Museum in London and also the Natural History Museum in Tring. They're going to be helping us with our quizzes. So I'd like to say a big hello to Tom, Connor and Nigel as they join us this morning. Hello, you three. Looking amazing. Wow, that is fantastic. Um, so we thought it was only fair that Tom, Connor, Nigel, you take part in today's quiz as well. So does that sound okay? Excellent. Okay, so rather than compete against these three, because of course, they work at the museum, they've got a bit of an unfair advantage, they know their dinosaurs. So rather than compete against these three, we're going to level the playing fields a little bit. You at home get to choose either Tom, Connor or Nigel to be your team captain. You're going to join one of their teams and then whatever your team captain scores, at the end of the quiz, you get to add to your own points. So that will be a nice bonus to your score if you choose carefully. And to help you make that all important decision, we need to find out a little bit more about those teams. So let's start off with Tom. Can you tell us about your team? Yes, hello everyone. Oh, Tom here. Now I've had a blast helping set some of the homework club challenges this week. And today my team is Team Deinonychus. Now a lot of people uh, mistake these for velociraptors, uh, but uh, Velociraptors are tiny. They're little things about the size of a fox. We are the real movie stars. Now, one thing I've learned from Homework Club this week is that the dinosaurs alive today, birds, uh, are part of the same group that Deinonychus, T-Rex and Velociraptor were part of, theropods. Mm. Now, we know this partly because so many of them had feathers. We can see them on the fossils, huh, like me. So join me on Team Deinonychus today, the closest living relatives to the living dinosaurs alive today. Amazing, thank you, Tom. Um, I really like the sound of this team. It sounds pretty ferocious, uh, but let's see who is up next. I think we have Connor to tell us about the next team. Hello, everyone. This is Connor here, and I'd like to welcome you to Team Triceratops. Now this week on Dinosaur Club, um, I've learned all about how 
dinosaur legs go straight down under the body. That's one of the features that makes a dinosaur. And here we've got a perfect example with our Triceratops. Triceratops also has these three strong horns, which it could use to even fight off the mighty T-Rex, which makes the Triceratops one of the strongest dinosaurs out there. So I want you to invite you to Team Triceratops, which is one of the strongest teams out there. Please join us. Oh, I like the sound of Team Triceratops. It sounds like you would be quite a strong team there. But don't make your decision just yet because we have Nigel to hear from as well. Hi, everyone. I'm on Team Ankylosaurus. Uh, I have my team mascot. And today we're going to use our spiky skin to protect ourselves from difficult questions. And we're going to use our club tails to smash those questions right out of the park. Um, now, this week in Homework Club, I learned how to say the word dinosaur using Makaton. Um, and if you'd like to copy with me, I'm going to show you how to do it. So we start off by moving our dinosaur feet forwards and then imagining lots of time going past. So it's dinosaur. Dinosaur. I like that. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks for sharing. Okay, now it's over to you at home or at school, wherever you're watching, to choose your team. Will it be Team Deinonychus, Team Triceratops, or Team Ankylosaurus? And if you're watching on YouTube, you can actually let us know in the comments which team you are joining today. Whilst you do that, I'm going to tell you about the rules of the quiz. There are going to be three rounds with four questions in each. Now, we'll ask you a question give you a short while to think about the answer and then go on to the answer pretty much right away. So that means that you don't need to worry about writing your answers down, but it is a good idea to have pen or paper, something to write on nearby so you can record your score. And also there will be a drawing question later on. So you'll need something to draw on a little bit later. There will be one point for each correct answer. So that's a maximum of 12 points for you to score at home. But don't forget, you will be adding on your team captain's points too at the end of the quiz. We do want you to talk in your teams at home or at school about what you think the answers are, come up with an answer together. But please don't be tempted to post your answer in the chat box. And if you do see anyone posting their answers, don't be tempted to copy them because they might not have the right answer. So hopefully you've joined your teams already. I'm just going to check the comments and see which teams are popular. Um, team captains, Tom, Connor, Nigel, are you feeling ready for the quiz? Are you ready to give it a go? I hope they are um, because, oh, there they are. They're giving us a thumbs up. They're looking good. Fantastic. Um, brilliant. So I think we are ready to get started with round one. Round one is going to test your general dino knowledge. Okay, so question one. Dippy is one of our favorite dinosaurs at the museum. But what type of dinosaur is Dippy? What type of dinosaur is Dippy? In fact, Dippy's been touring the UK recently. It's visited lots of different destinations. Maybe even you got to visit Dippy. And did you know? Dippy has a blue Peter badge. That's pretty cool. There's not many dinosaurs out there that have a blue Peter badge. But what type of dinosaur is Dippy? OK, hopefully you have your answers ready at home. We can reveal that the correct answer is... Diplodocus! Well done if you said Diplodocus. Or if you said Diplodocus, that's also fine. You get one point if you said that. OK, question number two. This is a simple true or false question. Some dinosaurs were smaller than you. True or false? Some dinosaurs were smaller than you. True or false? Hmm. Well, we know that dinosaurs could be huge. We've heard of Ankylosaurus, Triceratops, Deinonychus today. We know that they could get pretty big. And there were ones like Titanosaur that was absolutely humongous. But were there any small dinosaurs? Some dinosaurs were smaller than you. True or false? We can reveal that the correct answer is... 
True. Well done if you said true. That is one point for you. Okay, question number three. So most dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, but some survived. Did you know that? There are still dinosaurs alive today. But which types of animals that are still alive today are considered dinosaurs? Now, this is a tricky question, although I think Tom might have given us a bit of a clue earlier if you're listening in on that. Um, so we've got three options for you to choose from. You think it might be A, giraffes, B, iguanas, or C, chickens. So which types of animals that are still alive today are considered dinosaurs? A, giraffe, B, iguana, or C, chickens? Hmm, that is a tricky one. If you're not sure, just have a guess. You've got a one in three chance of getting it right. Hopefully you have your answers ready at home. We can reveal that the correct answer is... Chicken! Well done if you said chicken. Now I know that might surprise some of you. Um, chickens are dinosaurs? What? In fact, all birds are considered dinosaurs. Scientists call them avian dinosaurs. Now, that, that might be blowing some of your minds. There are still dinosaurs alive today. If you go for a walk later on today and you see any pigeons or any birds around, you're technically looking at a dinosaur. Um, so if, if you'd like to find out more information to, about that, you can head to our website um, and we've got some more details to help you learn about why birds are considered dinosaurs. Okay, it's time for our final question of round one. What is the Makaton sign for dinosaur? So like Nigel said earlier, we've been learning a lot of Makaton in our homework club with our friends from Tring, but what is the Makaton sign for dinosaur? Can you remember what Nigel showed us? Not too long ago, hopefully you've got some ideas. Have a go at doing it at home. See if your friends or your classmates or your brothers and sisters, adults, whoever's around can remember as well. Um, but I think, we should bring back Nigel to help us answer this question. So hello again to Nigel. Hopefully you're going to join us there. Um, can you help us with the answer for this one? Yeah, of course. So if we remember, it's got two main parts. We walk forward with dinosaur feet and then we imagine a lot of time going past. So it's dinosaur. Dinosaur. I really like that. I'm going to do that all day, I think. Um, so if you did that at home, and you had your feet walking forwards and some time in the past, a little bit like that. Or if you did something that looked vaguely similar, um, you get one point. Well done. OK, so that is the end of round one. So please let us know your scores where you're playing. You can use the chat box on YouTube and we'll bring back our other team captains to find out how many points we've got so far. So remember, it's out of four for round one. Um, Nigel, I, I imagine you got that Makaton one. You did pretty well there, but how did you do overall? Yeah, like you said, I've been practicing my Makaton, so I knew that one. And um, I wasn't really sure about question three because the iguana has spikes, a bit like an ankylosaurus. So I wasn't sure whether it might be a dinosaur. And um, so I got three points in total. Ah, excellent, three points. That is very, very good. Well done to team ankylosaur. Um, next up, let's hear from team Triceratops. How are you getting on? Well, we did we did pretty good. We got two points. We got a bit mixed up with uh, the size of dinosaurs. So I kind of assumed all dinosaurs were big. So that's why I thought a giraffe was a dinosaur because it, its legs were right. And so I got a bit mixed up there, but we got two points, which I'm quite happy about. Excellent. Well done, Team Triceratops. And I can see that we've got Fred watching, who's joined Team Triceratops, so I know Fred will be very pleased for that. And we've got lots of people in Team Ankylosaurus as well, so they'll be pleased for Nigel's points. Um, I think we should hear about Team Deinonychus. How did you get on in that round? Well, this round we did pretty well. Uh, we knew a few of those about dinosaur relatives and knowing that some of them were smaller. But uh, I'm afraid to say that we got so confused with how many different pronunciations, we forgot what the dinosaur Dippy was. So uh, we didn't get that one. We got three out of four. 
that is a brilliant score three out of four that some of them were quite tricky questions and i can see in our comments we've got knackle playing as well who's got two points megan who's got three out of four and we've got someone else called nigel playing at home and they're on four out of four points so we've got some very good scores coming in well done keep it up um but team captains you've been fab so far we'll say goodbye for now and see you after the next round let's dive in to round two, which is called, is it a dinosaur? So this is going to be a rapid response round. We're going to show you four different animals and all you need to do is work out, is it a dinosaur? So if you think it is a dinosaur at home or at school, you can just give a thumbs up like that. If you think it is not a dinosaur, you can give a thumbs down. Now also, Try to remember back, Connor said something at the beginning of the quiz today um, that gave us a little bit of a clue about something to look out for with dinosaurs, something to do with their legs. So that might help you, but if you're not sure, just have a guess. Okay, are you ready? Question one, is it a dinosaur? Stegosaurus. Is it a dinosaur? Stegosaurus. So remember, you can give a thumbs up at home if you think it is, or a thumbs down if you think it is not a dinosaur. Check in with the other people around you as well. Do they agree? Is it a dinosaur? Stegosaurus. Well, we can reveal that the correct answer is... Yes! Stegosaurus is a dinosaur. One point for you if you got that right. Okay, next up, we have question two. Is it a dinosaur? Ichthyosaur. Ichthyosaur. Hmm, that is a slightly trickier one. Is it a dinosaur? So remember at home, you can give a thumbs up for yes or a thumbs down for no. Is it a dinosaur? Ichthyosaur. Well, we can reveal that the correct answer is... No, the answer here is no. Ichthyosaur is not a dinosaur. So if you said no, that is one point for you. Well done, because that was a tricky one. That might also be a bit of a surprise to some people at home that this ichthyosaur is not a dinosaur. So we'll clear, clear things up in, in just a bit. Um, but for now, we'll move on to question three. Is it a dinosaur? Mantellosaurus. Mantellosaurus. Is it a dinosaur? Now, that's actually one of the specimens that we have at the Natural History Museum. You might recognise the building of the museum in the background. It's quite an iconic um, building. But is Mantellosaurus a dinosaur? So thumbs up for yes. Thumbs down for no. Hopefully you have your answers ready. We can reveal that the correct answer is... Yes, Mantellosaurus is a dinosaur. Well done if you said yes. That is one point for you. Question four, is it a dinosaur? Dimetrodon. Hmm. Is it a dinosaur? Dimetrodon. I think this is a little bit tricky as well. I've not heard too much about this dinosaur, or oh, this animal, I should say. I'm not sure if it is a dinosaur or not yet. Um, not heard too much about it, but it definitely does look quite a prehistoric animal. Is it a dinosaur? So you know the drill, thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. We can reveal that the correct answer is no. No, Dimetrodon is not a dinosaur. Oh, I'm sure that would have caught some of you out. That is another tricky one. So ichthyosaurs, Dimetrodon, not dinosaurs. So I think let's bring back Connor because Connor was learning about this in Homework Club this week to help clarify how can we tell, what were we looking out for in that question? Well, yeah, it can be quite tricky because you might have seen all of these animals in different books about dinosaurs and things, but also they might be about other kinds of um, extinct animals too. There's a couple of things you can look out for. The first thing is look out for the legs because dinosaur legs always go straight down under the body. So if you have a look at the Stegosaurus and Mantellosaurus, you can see their legs go straight down under their body. If you have a look at Dimetrodon, you can see its legs 
kind of stick out to the sides a bit in this sprawling position, a bit like a lizard. So that shows us that Dimetrodon was not a dinosaur. The other thing to look out for is where they lived because dinosaurs were all land animals. They didn't live in the ocean. So if you have a look at the ichthyosaur, it's got flippers and a swimming tail. It was a, a water animal. So um, that kind of gives us a clue that it was not a dinosaur as well. That is very useful to know. Um, so there we have it. That is the end of round two. So let us know your scores at home. We're keen to hear how you're getting on. Um, but we'll bring back our other team captains and um, to find out how they're doing. So we'll start off with Connor. I'm, I'm guessing you did pretty, pretty well in that round. Yeah, this was the round I was waiting for. And <laughs> Team Triceratops, we scored four points. So I'm happy with that. I'm sure Team Triceratops at home will be very happy with that as well. Well done, Team Triceratops. Um, team Ankylosaurus, how are you getting on? Uh, so I wasn't really sure about the ichthyosaur uh, because it has saw in its name and I thought maybe it was a dinosaur. Then I remembered what Connor said about legs. And uh, so I managed to get four points. <sighs> Fantastic! I know Team Ankylosaurus at home will be very, very happy with that as well. Um, and last but not least, Team Deinonychus, how are you getting on? Uh, we did we did pretty well as well. We we got three. Uh, the one that we didn't get was Demetrodon. Uh, we remembered that there was a dinosaur with a sail, but it wasn't that one. It must not have been because that Demetrodon's not a dinosaur. So uh, we didn't get that, but we got three out of four. Oh, well done. I think that is pretty good going. And I can see some scores coming in from home as well. So we've got Kitson, who is age 11, got three in that round, which is fantastic. Nakul is going strong with two as well. Shamalia, I hope I said that right, has got three points. So some very good scores going on. Um, well done so far. Um, so this means it is time for our final round. So team captains, we'll see you again shortly. Let's start our final round. Round three is where we're going to begin your training to become a junior paleontologist. A paleontologist is a scientist that studies fossils. So this round is going to test your scientific skills of looking and listening carefully. OK, so uh, question one is going to get you looking very carefully at one of our specimens. So in a moment, you're going to see an image of Sophie the Stegosaurus from the museum. We're going to give you 15 seconds to count. How many plates does Sophie the Stegosaur have? Now the plates are the things on Sophie's back. They're quite thin, have a look out for them. So we'll show you an image really close up in a moment. You're going to have 15 seconds to count how many plates Sophie the Stegosaurus has. Are you ready? Let's go.
Hello again. Sorry about that. I think my internet went extinct. Hopefully you managed to count how many plates Sophie the Stegosaurus had. Um, but maybe we can give you just a few more seconds with that slide again in a moment. So just to recap, I'll remind you of what this round is all about. So this round is all about becoming a junior paleontologist, and it's gonna be testing your scientific skills of counting, looking, and listening carefully. So question one was about Sophie the Stegosaurus, who you might have met at the museum, who is a wonderful specimen. Um, so hopefully in a moment, we'll be able to show you that image of Sophie the Stegosaurus again. And remember that the question is to count how many plates Sophie the Stegosaurus has, okay? So in a moment, you're going to see the image and we'll give you 15 seconds to count how many plates. If you've already done it, then this is a good chance to double check. Are you ready? Let's go. Time's up. Okay, well now you've had two chances to count the plate. So let's see if you have the correct answer. We can reveal the correct answer is 19. Well done if you said 19. Now that was very tricky um, because actually at the end of Sophie's tail, there are what we call tail spikes. So they might have caught some of you out. But if you're just looking at the flat ones along Sophie's back, there are 19. Okay, so question two is going to test your skills of listening carefully. So we've met Sophie the Stegosaur. We're now going to meet a different Sophie. This Sophie is very much human and is from our learning team. We want you to listen carefully to Sophie because she's going to be describing a mystery dinosaur. And we want you to have a think about what dinosaur is being described. So in a moment, you're going to see Sophie from our learning team. Listen carefully to the description of the mystery dinosaur and answer what dinosaur is being described. Are we ready? Over to Sophie. This mystery dinosaur has a long pointy nose, a little bit like a crocodile. It has sharp pointy teeth and sharp claws on its fingers. Along its back, it has a sail which sticks up in the air. Scientists recently made discoveries that suggest this dinosaur may have liked to swim and might have used its thick tail to help power through the water. Okay, thank you, Sophie. Good description there. I think some of the main clues were the sail that runs along its back and also the fact that it likes to go for a swim. There was a dinosaur that recently made the news for a liking the fact that it likes to go for a swim. Now, it is a dinosaur that is quite famous. Some of you may have heard it before. But if you have absolutely no idea, that's fine. Just have a guess. You never know, you might get it right. Okay, hopefully you've got your answers ready. We can reveal that the correct answer for question two was... Spinosaurus! Spinosaurus, fantastic. Oh, what a cool looking dinosaur we've got there. So if you said Spinosaurus, that is two points for you. Oh, sorry, that is one point for you. That was question two, worth one point. So if you said Spinosaurus, that is one point for you. Question three, okay. So here we have an image of something called a trace fossil. So trace fossils are not necessarily part of an animal's body. They're more like something that an animal left behind. So your question is, what type of trace fossil is this? Now we've got three options for you to choose from. Do you think it's A, a fossilized eggshell? Do you think it's B, a fossilized footprint? Or do you think it is C, fossilized poo? So I'll read that out again. What type of trace fossil is this? A, fossilized eggshell, B, fossilized footprint, or C, fossilized poo? So have a close look at the picture that we have on the screen. You might be able to see any patterns or any clues that might give it away. Okay, hopefully you have your answers ready at home. We can reveal the correct answer is... 
fossilized poo. Well done if you said C. Now, fossilized poo are also called coprolites. And scientists actually study them to help us work out what animals in the past like to eat. And that leads us to our final question. So question four, paleontologists and other types of scientists often use scientific drawings to help us to learn more about science and nature. So for question four, we would like you to draw the shape of a carnivorous dinosaur's tooth. Now, it doesn't need to be a perfect drawing. Just do a very quick sketch. And in particular, we just want you to think about the shape. So what kind of shape do you think a carnivorous dinosaur would have on their teeth? Now, a reminder for you, what is a carnivore? I'm sure lots of you know at home, what is a carnivore? Well, that's an animal that eats meat. So think about the sort of shape a carnivorous dinosaur's tooth would be. So I'll just give you a few moments to finish your drawing. You'll get a point for the shape, remember. Um, but whilst you're finishing that, let's bring back Tom, one of our team captains from Team Deinonychus, um, to see what you did for your drawing. Hello again, Tom. Hello again. Oh, yes. I'm glad you asked me this one because I'm the only team that is a carnivore. So I should definitely know this one. And I've, I've drawn a couple of teeth here. So we've got a long pointy one and we've got a sharp serrated one. So both of these are types of carnivore teeth. They are fantastic. Now, I should say for you playing along at home, don't worry if they're not quite as detailed as that. The way that you get the point for this one, if you've drawn something that looks sharp or it looks pointy, you get one point. And Tom, that is fantastic. Thank you for sharing them with us. That brings us to the end of our quiz questions. So you can now add up your scores and let us know how many points you have so far. But in a moment, you'll be adding on your points from your team captain. So we'll bring back Team Triceratops and Team Ankylosaurus there. Hello again. Oh, I'm very excited to find out your final scores. And we'll start with Tom. I had a fantastic round. I was able to get all four correct. Uh, I was really pleased to see Spinosaurus, one of my theropod cousins, appear. That's the one I was thinking of in round two, so I'm glad he made an appearance. Amazing. And i got to say, I did say earlier, I love your feather arm guards, just like Deinonychus. They are <laughs> Keep incredible. Keeping your eggs warm. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping your eggs warm. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so that brings you to a total of 10 points for team Deinonychus. Oh. 10 points. Amazing. Your team at home will be thrilled with that. Um, let's go up next to team Triceratops. How did you get on? We did well. So luckily, due to technical problems, we had a second chance at counting the Stegosaurus plates. And that brought our score up to four points. So we got a total of 10 points as well. Oh, fantastic. Team Triceratops are going to be really pleased with that. Well done, Connor. And last but not least, Team Ankylosaurus, did you, did you beat them? Did you get more than 10? Well... I knew that Ankylosaurus, like our mascot here, have round teeth for eating plants. So I knew about the pointy teeth for carnivores, but I counted too many plates on Sophie the Stegosaurus's back. Still, I got three points. So that means in total, 10 points as well. Amazing team Ankylosaurus on 10 points. And we've got some more scores coming in from our friends at home. So Otto, who's age six, has nine out of 12 points. Fred got seven. Theo, age seven, got four out of four in that round. So well done to everyone playing at home. You will have noticed, Tom's noticed, he's done the maths. We've got a bit of a tie in our online studio this morning. And I think it'd be really nice for our first ever homework club quiz to have a winner. So I think the way we will settle this is with a roar off. Are you ready? for a roar off. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term roar off, um, don't worry, it's very simple. Each of our team captains are going to have a chance to do their best dinosaur noise. Okay, so we'll hear from Tom, then Connor, then Nigel. And then it's up to you at home to decide which of our team captains did the best dinosaur noise and they will get 
one extra point. So I'll keep my eyes peeled in the comments to see what you think at home, who deserves that extra point. Um, but if you can't come to a consensus, if there's no overwhelming winner, I will choose who I think has got the best one. But So let me know in the comments so we, we can crown your winner. Um, so team captains, are you up for that? Are you going to give it a go? Excellent. Okay, so we're going to start with Tom and I'll count each of you in from three. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I think it's quite clever that you outsourced the roaring there. Um, well done. Well done, Team Dionysus. So, <laughs> well done. I enjoyed that quite a lot. Um, Connor, we're coming to you next. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. <laughs> Oh, I like that one. I was not expecting that. It's been away from our traditional raw. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Okay. So don't make your minds up yet. We've got one raw left or one noise left. Nigel, three, two, one. <laughs> yes, that is definitely the kind of raw I expect from a dinosaur. Fantastic. Okay. Who do you think at home? Who deserves that extra point? Was it Tom who outsourced the roaring? Was it Connor's awesome hissing noise? Um, and was it Nigel's amazing roar? Remember, we don't know what dinosaurs really sounded like. So it's really up to you about which one you think is best. Now, whilst you vote on that, I'm just gonna remind you a bit about our homework club. So remember each week there is a different nature theme. Each day, weekday at 9.30, we will be sharing a different challenge with you. These will be on our Twitter channel, which is at NHM underscore learn, or on our webpage that you can see on the screen now. Each Friday, there will be a live quiz just like this one today. Now, I can reveal very excitingly that next week's theme is all about winter wildlife. So stay tuned next week um, for some more challenges from Monday at 9.30 that will get you looking at the winter wildlife near where you are. So um, we can't wait to see you then. But I think now it's time to um, crown that extra point. And I can see that there's been some support to Team Triceratops and Team Deinonychus. But the winner is Nigel, Team Ankylosaurus. You got the most amount of points, um, most amount of votes at home. So that means you get one extra point. Team Ankylosaurus on 11 points. Um, well done. I am sure your team will be thrilled at home. So all that means is time we have left for a final, final message to each of your teams. Um, so Team Deinonychus, any final words? Oh, well, we lost, but... At least my relatives are still alive today. That's that's pretty good going, to be fair. <laughs> um, the birds are still yeah. around today. Um, Team Triceratops. Um, just a big thank you to every member of Team Triceratops and also everyone who's joined in the Homework Club this last week and hopefully next week too. Amazing. Thank you. And last but not least, our winner for today, Team Ankylosaurus. Thank you very much, Team Ankylosaurus. You did a great job. And I hope that you used your tail clubs to smash those tricky questions. I think that's just good general life advice. Use your tail clubs to smash through the tricky times. I like that. Thank you. Thank you so much to all of our team captains. We hope to see you again in our future quizzes. Um, goodbye to our team captains for now. And thank you so much for joining us at home. We hope you've had fun. Don't forget, if you want to take part in our homework club, the dinosaur challenges from last week will still be on there for the rest of today and over the weekend. But from Monday, we start with our new topic, winter wildlife. Um, so we hope to see you next week for our live quiz. But until then, have a lovely weekend and goodbye. <laughs>